the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today our uh, service is Divine Service 1, which is on page 151 at the front of our hymnal. We sing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
We say together, our introit. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Sing praise in your name, Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, in the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. And for you, O Lord, and made me glad by your work. In the works of your hands I sing for joy. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to His people on earth. be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our hearts and minds on the things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you, son of man... I have made a watchman of the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way. That wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, That person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of our Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist that have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, 
and uh, those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of our Lord. gospel reading this morning is from the gospel of Matthew chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world of t- uh, for temptation to t- sin, for it is necessary that temptations come. But woe to the one who, by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter crippled or lame than with the two hands and two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountain and go in search of that one who has gone astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the other ninety-nine, that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For when 
the two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's stories about sheep in the Scottish Highlands, how they would wander off on their own. Sometimes these wayward sheep would come near the sides of cliffs or some steep drops. But they would see a spot of a patch of grass just feet away on a rock formation lower than the ledges. The sheep desiring this isolated patch of grass would jump down onto those spots and happily eat away until nothing is left. And then the sheep realizes it's in danger. They can't get back up to the safety of the ground that they came from. And they no longer have any food to eat. They no longer have access to water to drink either. They realize that this greener pasture is actually a dangerous place, and it isn't where they want to be. And so they bleat their cries and hope that somehow they will be saved. There's a painting that I once saw that shows this very situation. Picture it in your mind, that there's this lone sheep 
trapped and separated from the rest of the flock and his shepherd. The sheep is on this little isolated island with a small patch of grass underneath his feet. And the sheep is now laid down, facing away from that land where he came from, where he was once happy and safe. And it's easy to imagine that this poor sheep has grown weak from the lack of food and water. And this once stubborn and headstrong sheep has now given up on any hope of being rescued. This image of a sheep in danger isn't one that we always like to think about. We usually just think about a cute little lamb that has just kind of gone astray down a path on a road, and it's just a quick run down that road to quickly grab that sheep off of that road or off of that hill and bring him back to safety. But in reality, that's rarely ever the case. Sheep are rather dumb creatures. They eat and sleep, and that's pretty much all that they really do. That's all that they want to do. When a sheep is urged to go somewhere that it doesn't want to go, it doesn't move. They're stubborn in their own desires to do whatever they want, whatever they feel like doing, and it can get them into a lot of trouble. We may not want to admit it, But there are times when we're a lot like that sheep. Being independent and headstrong are values that have become instilled in us here in America, inside of the culture we live in. It's reinforced in us through television, advertisements, and social media. We're told that we can handle anything that comes in our way, and we can handle anything that comes across our path, and that we can have anything the way that we want it. We live in a fallen world where society believes that it alone can tell people how to live. Many have conformed to society's morality and ethics, believing that as long as they aren't physically hurting anybody, everything is okay. We're told by mainstream society that the Bible is an outdated book, and it hasn't kept up with the times to be progressive with the changes which are better for our future. Society proclaims that even if there is a heaven or a divine reality, everyone will be going there eventually. People are naturally good and do good things, except for criminals, mass murderers, the people that would say or do anything that would hurt people, and we would say that they're barely human. This line of belief is actually rather appealing. It takes away any blame on the average person. Society tells them that they're a good person at heart. And it's okay if you told that lie. It's okay if you swear. It's okay if you want to take something that's not yours. It's okay if you have desires for someone who's not your spouse. As long as no one's getting hurt, what's the problem? Society tells you, You've done nothing wrong. This is so appealing that it lures so many of us, and we get trapped, isolated. Society keeps breaking down the rules of morality and ethics until it breaks down a boundary that hits way too close to our home, and we realize that something's gone terribly wrong. We realize that society has gotten out of control, out of hand, And that living on that tiny island of that green grass isn't what we want anymore. We realize that society can't provide what we need. It can't give us what we need to survive. And so we cry out for help. And eventually, some of us give up hope of finding the truth of the world and the true way to live. Even though we have given up like that sheep sometimes on that island, there is a shepherd who hasn't given up on us. In the Gospel reading this morning, Jesus tells his disciples a brief parable about how a single sheep is lost, even from a flock of a hundred. The shepherd will leave the 99 that are still there together, 
And he will go back for that single sheep that has gone astray and has gotten lost. Think about that lone and scared sheep that has given up. Now picture his shepherd coming out to the edge of that cliff and putting himself in danger on that edge. And and for the sake of just that one lost and scared sheep that has given up. And he reaches out with his staff and hooks it around that sheep, that weakened sheep that can no longer move, and he brings that sheep back to him. And he rescues that sheep from that perilous situation that he's gotten himself into. We too have a loving shepherd who risked his life for us. He put himself in such danger that it actually claimed his very life. The shepherd I'm talking about is Jesus Christ. He was mocked, beaten, nailed to a cross, and lifted up to hang on it. The pain, the agony, he suffered, he died. And he did it willingly. He went to his own execution because he knew that there was no other way for you or for me to be saved from our sins. When he hung on that cross, he took all of humanity's sin upon him. He became the ultimate and final sacrifice for the atonement to God. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, did all of that for us. He did it because it was the only way so that when God looks at us in the last days and are judged, He doesn't see all of the sins that were once clinging to us. He sees us pure and holy. Jesus is the shepherd who rescues us from our sins. He pulls us from the dangerous situations that we put ourselves in in our lives. He brings us back to the comfort and safe ground with Him and a life with a firm foundation in God's Word. Even though we sometimes give up and we wonder why the world has fallen into the state that it's in, our shepherd never gives up on us. It's often when we've become like that weakened sheep that we can be rescued by Christ. When we realize that society doesn't have the truth, when we realize that and anything goes, morality is dangerous. And when we realize that we can't do anything to save ourselves, that's often when Christ places His staff around us and brings us back to His flock. It's through Christ, and Christ alone, that all who believe in Him are saved from their sins. He sets us back on the safe paths of our lives and warms us. He warns us about the dangers of the temptations that society would take us from. He keeps us by His side with His staff. Whenever we become too stubborn or have our own ideas of what is right and what is wrong, He gives us a gentle reminder with His staff. And He does it through the law. And He does it out of love and care so that we stay safe. Jesus is our loving shepherd. Follow Him and be comforted by His presence and give joy that He has saved you from your sins. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried.
resurrection and life, and your life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, after each petition of Lord in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have sent us pastors as watchmen. Let them be ever faithful in calling sinners to repentance and joyfully announcing your forgiveness to those who heed their warning. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you are the ultimate authority. Thank you for the good government and for those in authority over us. Guide them in using their authority to according to your will, and help us to be obedient. Be with those who are under corrupt authority and give them all boldness and confidence to live in accordance to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of all living things. Look with favor upon uh, those who farm. Let their harvest be fruitful that in providing for the needs of their neighbors, they may find fulfillment in their livelihood. Lord, in your mercy. Kind Master, grant favorable weather to all in your care and protect us from drought, famine, flooding, and other tribulation. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, Please look with compassion upon those who are struggling with illness, grief, loneliness, or mental or spiritual malady, especially Carter and Xander Herzl, Joseph May, and Verla Thomas. And we also ask you, Lord, to give your comfort and care also to all who have suffered and are still suffering from the hurricanes. Reassure them of your love which is like that of the shepherd who seeks and saves that one lost sheep. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also ask you to give your comfort and love and care to the family of of Helen Schilt, that she has recently passed away. We ask that you be with Isla Keller and Leslie and Corey Braxton. We ask that you surround them with your presence as they deal with, with this time of grief. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we also ask you to give your presence to the people who are on the power cruise to restore power in Florida. And we ask you to be with all of the relief workers who struggle endlessly to help all of those who are in suffering from these natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we also ask you to, uh, to give your blessing, and we thank you so much for the marriage of Tom and Melissa Fike. We, may you bless their marriage and give them comfort and joy throughout their new life together. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offering.
shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? We now pray how Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Again, uh, we have a few announcements this morning. I'm uh, also still doing those uh, getting to know the pastor meetings. On